Om Shanti and welcome back to your favorite show, Ek Mulakad. As you may know, we bring a special guest to you each time from different walks of life. Our distinguished guest today, Dr. Satish Reddy, who is the current chairman of DRDO, the Defense Research and Development Organization. In addition, he was also the head for Dr. APG Abdul Kalam Missile Complex. He's an acclaimed navigation specialist and has pioneered many technological developments for Indian missiles and has made significant contributions towards the successful flight testing of the country's first intercontinental ballistic missile, the Agni-5. Dr. Reddy has also initiated many new projects to equip the armed forces with state-of-the-art weapons and technologies. Dr. Reddy, Om Shanti and uh, welcome to the show. Dr. Reddy, you are an aeronautics scientist and um, the first question that comes to mind is this is such an intriguing field to say the least. So what was it that attracted you or inspired you to get into this field? When I passed out my engineering, mm -hmm. that was in the year 1984, passed out from electronics and communications engineering area. Okay. That's the time when I was thinking very seriously that I should work for Indian uh, research programs very seriously. There were at the time two avenues which were available. One is the Defense Research and Development Organization and the second is uh, the Indian Space Research Organization. So when I attended both the interviews, I first got the appointment from DRDU okay. and I joined DRDU mm -hmm. and they posted me in the missile laboratories. Okay. So started working in the missiles in the avionics area, started working on the complete aeronautics, beginning of the era of the missile development in the country, okay. indigenous missiles. So you had plenty of opportunities and a lot of work to be done and there was a lot of enthusiasm and what not everything you are trying to do everything for yourself you're making the country's first missile right. Prudhvi, mm -hmm. and then agni series missiles and all so there was no chance or there was no requirement to look back at all mm -hmm. you were just going ahead with various developments and uh, that resulted today we have become a completely self-reliant country in the area of missiles and aeronautics and uh, avionic systems for all these things, you developed a complete range of missiles which are required for the country today. So, starting from ballistic missiles, surface-to-air missiles, air-to-air missiles, anti-tank missiles, and similarly you developed light combat aircraft and uh, the entire avionics what is required for that is indigenously developed. So many systems from there mm -hmm. took on and went on and uh, so that's how the field, the day one I started working in this area, it was quite interesting, quite challenging. You only had the background what you studied in the engineering, right. where you had to learn everything, the system engineering, whatnot, and develop all these systems. So, worked on it and uh, you have a complete satisfaction today that yes, you worked in an area and you made the complete self country self-reliant in these areas and made, you are in fact ready to export many of the systems. Mm -hmm. So, you become one of the five nations, one of the six nations, one of the seven nations in varieties of these systems. Mm -hmm. Today you have an effective ballistic missile defense program also which country is uh, having successful program. So only about four nations or five nations have done. And I think you know the anti-satellite program, what the missile launch, what mm -hmm. we have done on 27th of March, a very successful right. one. And we became the fourth nation in the world who have done such an important complex mission with very high precision. Right. So, this all actually uh, gives you satisfaction right. and makes country proud and everything. Right. As I understand, you've had almost like 30 years of experience um, in this field. So, may I ask you, what is it uh, that, uh, you know, kept you going and what is the secret to your success? First thing is the environment and opportunities, what mm -hmm. were they? Dr. Abdul Kalam was the director of DRDL when I joined. He brought the integrated guided missiles development program for the country and you didn't have anything and you had plenty of opportunities mm -hmm. and a lot of enthusiasm was there. Leadership was very highly encouraging leadership. From our side, keeping this enthusiasm intact, then you only had to have hard work, sincerity, dedication, right. what is required and that went through mm -hmm. and all this 30 plus years we have been working almost 
continuously, mm-hmm. not taking any day off. You have been almost working every day. And uh, so that's how these achievements have been uh, got for the country today. Um, you have a lot of accolades, um, you know, as I understand. And uh, you've also currently, you head the Dr. Abdul Kalam uh, Missile Complex. So I was wondering. No, I am the secretary uh, for the R&D DRDO and chairman DRDO. Yeah, you're the chairman. And my previous position was that uh, where I was heading the APG of Kalam Missile Complex. So as a chairman of the DRDO, which is the Defense Research and Development Organization, uh, you've come here for SPARC, which is Spiritual Applications and Research Center. So I was kind of wondering, do you think um, science and spirituality, are they mutually exclusive or do you think um, they can go hand in hand? Is there any way that spirituality can influence science? Uh, firstly, the program SPARC, today they had a theme where uh, harmony through research and spirituality, So, which is a very, uh, today's need of the hour mm-hmm. where you need to have a harmony, a internal harmony and then external harmony which is required for this. So, when you talk about uh, science and uh, spirituality, science is the one which tries to find a truth mm-hmm. through experiments and mm-hmm. whatnot and everything. And uh, spirituality is you are trying to find out the same truth through your inner analysis mm-hmm. and inner uh, strength of you and converging the energies what you have. Uh, one is rather external, one is internal, you can say. Rather one is actually finding out the facts, another is, uh, you know, intuition. Right. Or uh, one is combination of a uh, group of uh, people working together where the spirituality is inner to you. So, but both are trying to find out the truth. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. But of course, uh, the layer between the two is narrowing today. But then both have, you have to do your own hard work, you have to do your own research, how to find out uh, the real truth in whichever way you carry on. But when you say spirituality, if I take it as uh, values, Mm -hmm. it is well. Unless you have values in your research, whether scientific research or research you are doing for defense or wherever it is, unless you apply the values and value-based research you are mm-hmm. doing, you won't get the harmony. Right. That is very essential thing. Right. So I thought the topic is apt and then let me come and as a defense scientist, I can put my view mm-hmm. and that's what I gladly have done today. Okay. Um, I also wanted to know that you do have a very demanding career to say the least. Um, what is it that you do to unwind? I mean, there might be days when, you know, it's um, probably very stressful. And um, so what is it that you personally do to unwind? Uh, I was giving an example today also. Mm-hmm. Like one of the missile, uh, when it was getting tested in the launch pad, we had a very serious trouble. And we were uh, spending hours together. We were not able to find the problem. Then uh, Dr. Kalam called all of us, about 15 people, to his room. Mm-hmm. And then he didn't talk about the problem at all. Then there was on the portrait on the wall of uh, Rameshwaram Temple's long corridor. Oh. And there was only one man standing in that long corridor. Then he started discussing about the universe, man, and what is a man in the universe, mm-hmm. and sort of things and things like that. We had a half an hour discussion or so. Then we discussed about the problem for five minutes. We went back with fresh minds. Off from all that problem, whatever we were having, all that stress in the mind. The next half an hour, the problem got resolved. So you need to find the ways where you are able to reset your mind and make your mind fresh. Right. You go to a different plane and you think from that plane. And that's how you'll be able to come out. And that's what I do. Um, you know, we have seen um, the launches and everything on TV. And it's a great honor that you're here with us you know, talking to us about all of this. Um, I would also like to know whether this is your first time, first visit here at the Brahma Kumari complex? Yeah, this is the first time. In fact, Mount Opu itself, I'm first time coming here. Okay. And Brahma Kumari is also, I'm first time. So when you first walked into the premises, into the campus, um, what was it like? I mean, what was your first impression or what was it that stood out in your mind? I definitely see that a lot of work is going on, fantastic work and dedicated people, committed people who are working for the peace of the world. Mm-hmm. And in fact, 
as I entered, people were saying, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. So that means people are there for the peace mm -hmm. and the type of love what they show it and simplicity and not looking anything towards their body. Everything is actually spiritual right. in mind and no importance given to the body at all. And I think uh, they have more than about six to seven thousand centers in the country and a few hundreds of centers outside the country, more than about a million followers dedicated to working to the cause. It's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And particularly the type of uh, medication, meditation, what they are doing, mm -hmm. uh, Raja Yoga and promoting the Raja Yoga and some of the studies what uh, our people also have done on that shows fantastic uh, improvements in the cognitive uh, right. you know, of a person, mm -hmm. uh, abilities of a person and various other uh, important parameters of the body, mm -hmm. whether the resistance of the skin, uh, LF by HF ratios, improvements and all that uh, are mm -hmm. excellent. And I think uh, it needs to be promoted in a big way where people get benefited by mm -hmm. this Raja Yoga and the technology, techniques what they are using and methodologies what are being followed. Uh, do you see um, any place for Raj Yoga in uh, the DRDO or any kind of research uh, positions that you may hold? As a research, what happens is mm. when you look at it, when uh, people who have taken up uh, Raj Yoga meditation and then look at them, what they were before and what they were, mm. as I said, the total cognitive parameters, physiological parameters and various parameters in the body and mind. We can do the study and analyze that, yes, there are lots of improvements and it changes mm -hmm. the total uh, you know, perception of the person and all those things. We are able to find and we can advocate it in a big way. It can be taken to the armed forces, to the people, CAPFs mm -hmm. and all that. There is always a scope for definitely to carry out a research study like this. Uh, you've also been involved in uh, Agni 5. Um, um, is there anything, you know, throughout your career of your past 30 years, um, is there anything in particular that um, stands out in your mind that uh, you would like to talk to us about? Uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, events in the life which are actually memorable. The first Prithvi launch, mm. the country's first Prithvi uh, ballistic missile Prithvi unit was launched. I was part of the team and it's really a remarkable thing. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the first launch of Agni, which has happened in the year 1989, the first re-entry vehicle of the country, that's again a remarkable mm -hmm. achievement. And then when uh, Indo-Russian joint venture Brahmos came, for that uh, uh, indigenously developed navigation system competing with the Russian navigation system getting incorporated into it. Uh, navigation of course is my actual Your subject, field, yeah, right. my field, where we could compete with them and put our own system. And finally, as you asked the question, a 5,000 kilometers long intercontinental ballistic missile, you are able to provide such avionics and guidance and mm -hmm. system and you are able to take few meters of accuracy is another achievement. Right. But finally, I, I feel really very satisfied man when uh, Honorable Prime Minister has given you a task that do it in two years, mm -hmm. a very complex mission like ASAT and uh, in a short period of two years achieving that and uh, going and hitting a target of satellite mm -hmm. with about five to six centimeters accuracy mm -hmm. in space with a relative velocity of 11 kilometers per second is really a uh, It's a big achievement. Yeah. yeah, it's a major achievement. Yeah, and uh, to be able to work so closely with the Honorable Prime Minister, as you said, and, you know, to follow out um, his directions, that itself is a great achievement yes. in itself. If, um, you know, you were asked to, like, say, describe your experience here at Brahma Kumaris in uh, maybe three words, uh, what would it be? I say you find a lot of pleasantness there, feel your mind is really pleasant and you find the people dedicatedly working, you get inspired from them for working towards the society mm -hmm. and there's a lot of research which can be carried out in this area which can be beneficial to the society. To the society. We have um, a lot of viewers uh, watching the show and um, I'm sure there are a lot of young adults out there who are watching us and would want to follow you in your footsteps. So what message would you have for them? I request all of them to work for the country. A lot of scope is there in uh, scientific research and dedicate yourself to the cause 
focus yourself on a particular uh, target what you have work towards it make a product of world class product you are able to sell it all over the world through your capabilities and make the country proud and prosperous um i was wondering did you get a chance to meet with um, any like we have our senior rajoginis here you know the dadi ji's who are like um i think she was away today she was not well she went to ahmedabad okay. okay. met uh, other couple of other uh, um, ladies who are there and a lot of people have met them so seen the dedication what they have commitment mm-hmm. they have and uh, i was trying to talk to them on many things seen the commitment is tremendous yeah the commitment and uh, even um, the years of uh, meditation that they have done i mean dadi ji have spent like 70 80 years you can see the glow in the face yes exactly the years of uh, med- meditation exactly has definitely given a lot of glow that you can see in the face right uh, that's exactly what i was alluding to if you uh, get a chance to interact with the dadi ji or any of our seniors then it immediately touches you cuz you're in their aura and that kind of you know brings you the peace and the harmony that you're looking for when you go back from here um is there anything that you would take back with you in terms of uh, what you have seen here or what you've experienced here um have you been here um like uh, a few days or is today your first uh, day just today to just today just today one thing is uh, i am going back with the memories of uh, uh what i have seen here in mount abu here mm-hmm. the brahm kumara samaj the commitment and the love what they show that's the memory but then i am going with how can i uh, see this rajyoga can be taken forward whether it can be applied to the uh, soldiers security personnel or various scientists or how can it go into the schools and colleges to improve the abilities of our people mm-hmm. number one and also indirectly the values in the society also can be improved because um as you said earlier um you know rajyoga is inner engineering and um you know your field is external engineering so i truly believe that if we can bring a cohesive union of the two then if you are able to improve the inner capabilities automatically your external capabilities also uh, improve we'll a lot improve. and then you will be able to do much better right see if you are able to get the capability to take the right decision at the right moment with the inner capabilities that is what you just required and major achievement um do you think this is something that is developed because when i asked you earlier about your secret to success you know you've been in this field for 30 years um you attributed that to your environment and but um do you uh, think leadership a concentrated work the dedication is also a meditation true right? that is very true but so that's uh, what i think i have done right um do you think leadership is um, acquired or are leaders born i definitely feel leaders are born and you can always improve upon that that's what i generally feel and there are techniques there are mechanisms a training which improves your skills mm-hmm. but leaders i feel that always are born they are born because um you know what i'm seeing in you is like you are um downplaying um your you know like your achievements uh, because you're being humble but um i can see that you know you're a born leader because you have done like so many amazing things in this field with these words i would really like to thank you for being with us today and uh we look forward to having you again and again so whenever you find time in your busy schedule please come back and uh we look forward to talking to you thank you so nice of you for the quite interesting uh, session what we had now and then uh, i definitely love to come back here uh firstly the place is fantastic mm-hmm. i never thought it is so lush green environment here in mount abu and then uh, as in brahmakumari samaj the type of uh, meditation done varieties of meditation mm-hmm. ones with music mm-hmm. ones with complete silence ones with some amount of you know guidance mm-hmm. and the love and affection what is shown definitely surely like to come back here and spend time here please do thank you so much thank you. om shanti thank you om shanti what an interesting conversation we had today with dr reddy he's a chairman of drdo the defense research and development organization his effort and his contributions 
has taken India to a new level in this field of aeronautics. I hope you all enjoyed watching the show today and his words of inspiration that has left us spellbound. We look forward to your continued support. Until next time, take care and Om Shanti. Thank you.